Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome back to my channel. And all my nails have come off except for my pinky because I'm crusty. I've been working on this textured brush pack ever since I saw how much people liked my everything brush. And so for the first bit of this video, I'm going to be demoing and basically showcasing how they are. And so if you're not interested in that, you can go ahead and skip using the video chapters. So the first one is called Crispy Pen, and I was really bad at coming up with names, so they all sound pretty similar. So the first one here, Crispy Pen, is a brush that I like to use for outlining because it doesn't have a lot of variation in brush size. The next one is Crumbly Pen, and a Crumbly Pen is pretty similar to Crispy Pen because they both kind of stay the same. They're pretty good for outlining, except what's nice about Crumbly Pen is when you use low pressure with it, you can create nice gradients, some nice textured gradients. And Crispy Pen doesn't really allow for gradients of that type because it kind of doesn't have a low pressure setting so crispy pen is more dense than crumbly pen crunch right here is slowly becoming my second go-to when it comes to lining because light pen pressure creates thinner lines and vice versa so it's very similar to the everything brush in that aspect but it's a lot more soft I guess compared to the everything brush and it also isn't too dense so it lets me build up the lines rather than just automatically dark harsh lines like the everything brush. So this one is probably my favorite name of this bunch is Grunch because it's like a big crunch. I don't know I'm bad at naming but basically I've been mainly using this as a handwriting brush. Because the brush tip is a square, it's really fun to just like write letters with it and make them square-ish. And so this brush allows you to create like square-ish letterings. It also has some pen pressure settings where you can create textured gradients with it too. Crunchy Pencil is the brush that is most like a traditional pencil, like an HP pencil or 2B, 6B, 8B, whatever you want, but more on the B side instead of H. And I wanted this one to almost feel like charcoal in a way. It acts differently with tilt and it's an extremely dark pencil. But if you use a light touch, you can get some really nice textures. However, those textures will still be a bit on like the denser side. And the sixth brush is the Brittle Pencil, which is the most pen-like in this pack, even though I named it Pencil instead of Pen for some reason. So I also included a brush named Brittle Pencil 2, which is just a slightly more textured version of the same brush. The density and opacity stays the same throughout this brush, and the size also stays the same. So it's a really good brush for when you want to be like forced to commit to your lines, I guess. And when you kind of don't want to spend too much time on something. It's pretty good for like handwriting also. And that's a huge preview of another brush I'm working on, which will probably be in another pack that is kind of crayon themed, something like that. And technically, all of these brushes you can use for anything, really. You can use them for sketching, lining, anything you want. But today, I'll be using the Crunchy and Brittle Pencil for sketching, and the Crumbly Pen and Crunch for lining. So if you watched my last video with the green-haired girl, I actually lined that piece with Crunch. Unfortunately though, I lost the footage, so. I just decided to make this entire video dedicated to these brushes. So for the past couple of days, I've been bugging my sister to create her own character because, I don't know, I think it's just fun to create characters and so I wanted her to kind of design her own so I could like draw it. 
And so I sent her a few pickaroos to pick from because I think pickaroos are the easiest way to get a visual for a character, especially when you're starting out to design them. It's easy to get some inspiration, some ideas from using pickaroos. And so she picked this one and I really like the purple hair and so I wanted to draw it. But for some reason I decided to finally sit down and draw this when it was like 30 minutes before my class. So I was like okay I need to finish this sketch within 30 minutes. And usually I sketch for at least like 45 minutes to an hour. So it was kind of fun to like give myself a challenge of like, yo, you need to finish this within 30 minutes or like you're screwed and you're going to be late to class or something like that. And I kind of really liked that idea of putting a time limit when I sketch because it makes me not want to waste time when drawing. Because if there was something that I was struggling with and I didn't like how it looked or I drew it and then it ended up looking a little wonky, I just let it stay like that because I was like, I have a limited time right now. If it looks wonky, I'll just fix it when I line. And so I was just committing to these lines and with the pen that I was using also, which is brittle pencil, um, I was really just committing to everything. And it really just, it's the nature of sketching, you know, it's just trying to commit to something messy and just going with the flow of, of it all. So that was fun. And if you struggle with sketching, I think like timing yourself is pretty good because there are those challenges where it's like drawing this in 10 seconds, drawing it in uh, 10 minutes and then drawing it in an hour or something like that. And I've actually been really into drawing hands lately. I feel like I'm getting better at doing them because I really just stare at my hand the whole time. And I mean, it's pretty convenient that like my entire right wall is a mirror so I could just look at myself while drawing and I don't have to take a picture now. But I've been doing a lot of observational drawing lately because of my drawing class. Um, I find a lot of it boring, but at the same time, I do think it's really helping me develop an eye for observational drawing because it's not just drawing from life. You know, you can use the skills or the stuff that you learn from observational drawing and apply it to like drawing stylized styles like this because the same way that you would look at an apple and draw it on your paper just from looking at it, you can just look at your hand in a certain position that you want and you could just draw it just straight from looking at your own hand and that is really going to make things a lot easier in the future and so I wanted to challenge myself by including hands in these drawings. And for this hand, I wanted like an okay pose. I actually used a reference picture where um, the girl was doing the okay pose but she was kind of just like hiding her eye in it but I decided later on to not put it near the eye and to just have her doing the okay pose um, 
instead of peeking through the hole with her eye because it, it looked a, a bit weird and I was just like, mm, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't want to draw that. So what I'm drawing for this video actually aren't commissions and it's just, it's so refreshing. I'm in like my break week right now, I guess, from work. And although these are meant to be my samples for the next time I open commissions, um, because I'm not getting paid to do them, it just, like something in my brain just makes me enjoy them more. So even though this character isn't mine and it's my sister's, it's something that I actually wanted to draw on my own free will and not because of money. And so I'm like, yes, like I'm gonna have so much fun drawing this and it was really fun. And later on I get to draw my own character. Finally, you guys get to meet one of my characters. Call me biased if you want, but I think I'm really digging girl pencil as a sketching brush because it just it adds a charm to this a messy, sloppy, sketchy sketch. <laughs> if that even makes sense, I think because of the way that I use this brush, it's pretty difficult for me to get like perfect lines with it and so I embrace the imperfections a bit more when I use it while sketching. Oh god, okay, I always struggle with knowing what to talk about in these videos. And I know I don't have to talk throughout because people have said that they like to have some sections where there's no talking and it's just music, but I like to treat these videos like my own little podcast, like my own solo podcast because I've always had the insecurity that I talk too much and that I talk too much about myself specifically. And so it's something that I've always been actively conscious about when speaking to other people is I really try to not talk about myself too much. And so these Draw With Me videos have been an outlet for me to not feel bad about, well, talking about myself. Because it is a video about me, right? It's my channel, it's my videos. And I feel like because personally I like to listen to podcasts or people talking in general while I work or play games, I guess I'm just trying to make the kind of content that I like to consume. Which is why I tend to fill these videos with talking. Now finally more about this drawing. I had talked to my sister about what kind of character this was and Lo and behold, she said that she has absolutely no idea and she just went with what was cute, which is completely understandable. And so I was like, okay, can I do whatever I want with her? And good thing that she let me. So I decided to actually just stick with what I saw on the pick crew for the design itself, like the outfit and hair and everything. But the character had these but the character had this super cute smile that gave off like friendly girl next door type of vibes. And so I wanted to keep that theme with this character. But I think I ended up making her look more cheerful and playful rather than like specifically friendly looking. She was also wearing these goggles that I didn't particularly feel like drawing. But for some reason, I guess I was in the mood of wanting to challenge myself and seeing if I could 
actually draw them, even though I had a 30 minute time limit. And um, I, I guess I kind of drew them. The perspective is so off though, but I, I kind of uh, sketched the goggles thinking that maybe uh, I would just delete them later on, but then I do end up keeping the goggles because I feel like her head felt a bit empty without them. And I can't really figure out what to put in the background. I feel like to this day, I'm still incredibly bad at backgrounds. And I just wish I, <laughs> I get better at them already. But anyway, since the Picru had flowers and leaves, I tried them out, but then I quickly realized that I hate drawing flowers. And so I just went to my go-to, which is twinkles and sparkles. Now on to lining. And so as you can see, I was kind of trying to figure out which brush I wanted to use for lining and I ended up going with crumbly pen. And this was definitely out of my comfort zone as a lining brush because I actually made this for gradient purposes and shading purposes, not exactly lining. But I wanted to test like the versatility of these, uh, of these brushes, so I decided to use this for lining. And it's a bit softer than I'm used to when it comes to lines. It's like, it has less anti-aliasing. Or no, I think it has more... I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, it, it has softer edges than like, say, the Everything brush. And so I was like, kind of just trusting the process here because I wasn't totally digging how these lines look, at least for how I want my style to look. But I was like, you know what? I could just go over these lines that I don't like later on in the overpainting. And I just kept pulling through. I did say it, it made it pretty easy to line. I guess you could say the look of how this turns out later on feels a bit looser. So I will dip for now and I'll come back later when I'm lining the hands.
Hello, I'm back and it is time to line the hands and I actually thoroughly enjoyed lining these hands because I was pretty proud of how the sketch turned out. Um, um, I had actually been practicing like contour drawing and observational drawing in my drawing class and at first I was like, ew, this is boring. I don't like this. I already know how to do this, but with practice comes, you know, more experience. And because I've been practicing in class, I got a bit better at like literally just looking at my hand and drawing the pose that it, it's in. And that helped a lot when drawing this because I've, I've never successfully drawn this pose for a hand before. And when it comes to lining hands, I have decided to like include more of the uh what are they called like the wrinkles the the folds in the hands more in the lines um at first i didn't really like how they looked before because i was like ew it makes like a the hands look like old or something but i've just grown to trust the process and be like oh those will be a lighter color later on they won't be as noticeable and it'll just help in adding depth to the hand and making it look more like a hand and here if you <laughs> if you see me pause it's because i am staring at my own hand in the mirror i was actually struggling a lot with this finger here specifically because i wanted to draw the nail on but also um it's just an, it's like an awkward pose. It's like, you know how it looks, but then once you actually look at like how the fingers look when they're doing the okay sign, you're like, that kind of looks weird. Like how the heck do I draw that? And so I had struggled and I was staring at my fingers the whole time. And I, I undo, I erase a lot with this finger. So yeah, I'm not perfect guys. It takes me a lot of tries also sometimes, even though most of the time in my videos, I do cut them out. I am very guilty of cutting out times where I just take so long in drawing something because it, it annoys me to see it. And it, it feels like it's like taking up time in the video and like wasting time or like wasting video time, something like that. But I, I do think some people like to see that. So I will try to include a lot more of like the mistakes and stuff because it makes it feel more real. And I put a question mark because I still wasn't entirely sure if that finger will look fine once I get to coloring. But the coloring will be in the next video and not in this one. Also, this ear, like, this is a very good looking ear. I'm very proud of how this ear turned out. So the same thing with the hands. I had actually struggled with drawing ears a lot before, like specifically how the inside of an ear looks and at times I would struggle even then still like while looking at them to figure out which lines to include and which ones to leave out. And this is something that my drawing class this semester has helped me with um, because we had to do a study of a contour drawing that Vincent van Gogh made of this man whose name was Igor Stravinsky. Stravinsky. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. I'm probably butchering it, but anyway, anyway, our professor gave us a handout of this drawing and we were basically copying it. Because it's a contour drawing, um, Picasso had drawn this while looking at the person that he was drawing instead of looking at the paper. So it looks a little wonky, like the proportions are all off, but for the most part, things still look like, uh, like the hands still look like hands. The ear looks like an ear, the face looks like a face. It's just like the head is really small and the, the hands are super big. Um, and there's just kind of like a charm to like how wonky it looks. And I was like really trying to embrace that. And in class, I had ended up drawing like the head like maybe three or four times. And 
the ear really stuck out to me because I had drawn it like upside down at one point and when I was copying the ear segment I was like even though this is upside down it still looks like an ear I'm like wow who would have known that Pablo Picasso was a genius and so so from copying the lines of how Picasso drew an ear by just looking at the ear instead of looking at the paper that is how I kind of learned how to get quicker at drawing an ear if that makes sense um if you don't know what a contour drawing is um it's just when you are looking at something and kind of drawing the outline of it and you're not looking at your paper too much like you can still sneak a peek every now and then but um it is like one of the first things that you would learn in a drawing class in college and i've learned it twice now and honestly it really does help because you start to know which lines of something are the most important. And now I will dip once more and I'm going to disappear until the next part of this video, which I will be sketching another character.
And now on to the sketching of my own character. Finally, you guys get to meet one of my original characters. So her name is Julia, but I call her Jules for short. She is your typical bisexual grumpy girl. And she's more like an intimidating and scary person rather than actually grumpy in terms of personality. And so this time I am using the crunchy pencil to sketch and I gotta admit I did kind of struggle a bit with sketching like the beginning parts of this drawing. I guess you can see I'm not totally used to the texture of a pencil brush like this because I'm so used to using something like the brittle pencil to sketch where there's not a lot of opacity and the brush looks the same no matter what type of like pressure you use or how fast you draw and since that isn't the case with the crunchy pencil uh, I struggled but I do really like how the sketch looks at the end of this but um I think I redrew these eyes and lips like a lot. <laughs> like these eyes are looking a little, little wonky. I do think that I tend to just struggle with um, front facing perspectives just in general. I struggle with like keeping the face symmetrical, like the jaw looking symmetrical is always like a bit lopsided. So when I do front facing, I really like to make sure to flip, but um, I, I hate having to adjust when it looks wonky while it's flipped. But these eyes, I was like, these eyes aren't looking how I want them to look. And especially with this character, Jules, um, she has like a specific eye shape that I like to draw. And so I, I will be adjusting these eyes a lot. And I was so tempted to cut it out just and like just skip to the part where I finally find the, the eye shape that I like but to show you guys my mistakes I will keep it in. As you can see, I use the liquify tool a lot. It is like a holy grail when it comes to digital art and I don't know how I survived without it when it didn't used to be in Clip Studio Paint. This is a lifesaver. Like, I struggled with the chin in this drawing, I struggled with the placement of the eyes, I struggled with the placement of the nose. You can see here I'm really trying to adjust her proportions and make her look like how I want her to look. And because especially with this character, I have a very specific way that I want her to look. Like, a, there's this demeanor that I want her to give off with her facial features. And when it's not going how I want it to go, I get frustrated. And when I get frustrated, I get tempted to just give up and stop drawing. But because I was recording a video, I, you know, the, I was much more determined this time around. Like here, once again, I am redrawing the nose, I'm drawing the the lips again. For some reason, I only drew one eyebrow. Like, what what the heck? Why did I only draw one eyebrow? What was I thinking? I think, like, I don't know. I think I just got distracted with the lips and I forgot about the other eyebrow. But, for example, these lips, uh, they look okay, you know, if this was on any other character, but because this is Jules, I was like, no, this is this is not Jules' lips. I must draw them differently. And like, no, this isn't Jules' nose or something. I don't know. I think I keep this nose. I don't remember actually. Oh, what I actually end up doing later on is I sketch over the sketch because I'm a maniac and I sometimes like to sketch twice.
So onto the hand, once more, I was looking at my hand when I drew this. This time around, I actually did take a picture and I just wanted her to like, press like her thumb and index finger on her chin. Like that, that cool pose that people do, you know? And it's, it ended up look like she was thinking, even though I didn't intend for her to look like she was thinking. I just wanted her to have a cool pose, but because of the hands, you know, and I'm being a bit slow when drawing this hand because I am like looking back and forth from the mirror and from my picture. And I'm just, um, I'm trying to like kind of exaggerate the curves and the lines that I see because in my opinion, that's when hands look the best in drawings is when things are like overly exaggerated. Like, um, there's like the thumb curve in, you know, like how your fingers aren't always completely straight. Um, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I just, I wish I was better at explaining, but yeah, I guess my tip when you draw hands is to really, uh, emphasize those curves and those like mix up the curves and the harsh straight lines and eventually it'll look like a real hand or a stylized hand i guess So Jules or Juliet is actually based off of my Monster Hunter World character. I have always loved an ashy type of blonde and so I gave my Monster Hunter World character that hair color. And then there was this one hairstyle that I just kind of fell in love with and it's like a kind of like a shaggy short style. And I always thought that my hunter was cool because she's a girl and she likes hunting monsters and it was my first Monster Hunter game and so I really attached myself to this character and because I'm a filthy hammer main and this girl was always lugging around this huge hammer I always thought of her as being stronger than everyone else and that is amazing my AC just turned on so now there's gonna be noise but anyway, 
Jules is actually supposed to be one of the three main characters in my story about aliens, which I have talked about before. And this is a story that I have thought about turning into a webtoon, and if not a webtoon, then possibly, possibly, possibly if I am brave enough to venture into learning how, maybe making an indie game. So the aliens in my story are superhuman in a way that they are just inherently stronger and faster than humans but sometimes they develop like an even more enhanced trait. So Jules has like super ultra enhanced strength and she's supposed to be the physically strongest character of the main characters list. And she's gonna have muscles and she's gonna be like the tallest person there. She's just gonna be a big girl She's, she's gonna be a giant woman. That is that is my goal with Jewel. She's like this giant woman who can hold like a, a, a huge hammer. Because that's how she originally was. And okay, let's just say that I have a total crush on her. Okay, she is, she's like, she's my comfort character aside from a short haired girl that you sometimes see black hair. Sydney is her name. And when I designed Jules's outfit, I went on Pinterest and I created a board that had mainly like grungy and edgy outfits that were like mainly black, some of them had chains, kind of like edgy e-girl outfits. But I also wanted her to have some color on her that just pops out and comes at you because I still wanted her to be compatible with my style. And you guys know how much I like to draw bright colors, so why not a bright red shirt that says aliens on it? And you can't see in this sketch because it's a, it's a bust, but it does have kind of like a grungy uh, graphic tee design on it. And as for the background, I just put skulls around her because her shirt has skulls, even though you can't see it. And because skulls are cool and edgy and also question marks because I was just kind of in the mood of drawing question marks. And because it kind of, it kind of looks like she's thinking a little bit. It wasn't my intention to make her look like she was thinking, but it does. And so I just decided to ex accentuate that. And because I just want to gush about Jules a bit more, uh, I want to talk about how I actually just, she became like my go-to character to make in video games. So uh, when I started playing Final Fantasy XIV, I went with Jules as my Warrior of Light. And I had a very specific vision that I wanted for her. I wanted her to be a tank. I wanted her to be blonde with short hair and I wanted her to be the tallest woman ever. Like I want her to be a giant woman. And so I was trying to pick like the race. Um, Rogadins are obviously the huge race, but I didn't like how the Rogadins face looked, so I didn't go with Rogadin. And I ended up going with a female Highlander. But I also kind of didn't totally like how the female hand uh, Highlander looked, but I just went with it because they're fairly tall. Um, 
I didn't think an Elizin matched jewels, and so I went with a Highlander. And I chose the the tallest height, and it is so funny because once I got in the game, I'm this giant woman, and I I, I assumed that there would be more giant women around me, but no, it's just a bunch of Mikodes, a bunch of cat boys, cat girls, dragon girls. And so everyone around me is short and like my character just stands out as this like huge giant woman. And I love it. Like it is amazing. And I wanted her to be a tank because since she was a hammer wielder in Monster Hunter, I wanted her to hold a huge ax. So she became a warrior and it was like a warrior main in Final Fantasy for a while. And I just, I, I actually think I could admit that Jules is my favorite character. It kind of stings to say that because I love my other characters so much, but Jules is the one that I have kind of like given the most love to, I guess, like outside of drawing. Because I I have like played as her in video games and I just have like this huge attachment to her. And it feels great. <laughs> to just like be nerdy about a character that you yourself designed and you yourself created. And here I'm lining the hand and I actually really, really love how this hand turned out. So I'm using a uh, crunch to line and I'm loving how this brush feels while lining. It's maybe my second favorite brush. So I think when I'm in the mood for a softer look in my lines, I will go for crunch instead of the everything brush because everything brush is very like harsh lines. And this one, it kind of like gives me breathing room, you know, but I do think when I use crunch to line, I tend to make my lines thinner rather than thicker. And it's like the opposite when I use the everything brush. I also decided to give her a bit of a long nail. It's not too long. It's like a normal, typical nail. And speaking of nails, I have been really into experimenting with doing my own nails. So I started this hobby a bit ago because I came across this one Korean nail tuber named Ju Nail. Um, and I just loved how they did their nails and so I started looking into how to do my own because it is a form of art and I was like, I want to do some nail art and so I started buying supplies and I started doing my own nails and it's it's like, um, it's turned into some fun little thing that I like to show off in my videos because you can see my hands and I think once I get more supplies, I want to try like matching the drawing with my nails so maybe um if the character that i'm drawing has like yellow nails maybe i'll have yellow nails or i'll just like try to match like the background color with it i don't know it seems fun But yeah, I think my speaking battery is depleted for now. Like, I don't know what to talk about. So I'm gonna stay silent for now. And I wanna take this time to thank you all for watching and thank you all for the support I do at every video. And I will hopefully never stop thanking you for the support at the end of every video because I think it's super important to express gratitude to your audience because you guys are the reason that I have this channel. You know, you're the reason that I'm continuing to do this. And so if you enjoy my content, I want to remind you that I do have a Patreon that you can have early access to some of my videos and you can have exclusive access to some uh, smaller videos that I don't post on YouTube. And if you haven't already and you'd like to see more of my content, please subscribe and you can like the videos if you want. You don't have to. 
Uh, I don't really much care for legs, to be honest, but they do help a lot, I think. And yeah, just I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Goodbye.